Okay, welcome to the first bridge in the unholy trinity of bridge stupidity in Copenhagen. Here it is, the Inner Harbor Bridge, in Inahounsbon in Danish. This monster of a bridge is important. The location of it is very intuitive and very useful. It comes from the medieval city center and is part of the bicycle network leading to the southern suburbs. So far, so good. But this is the bridge that really is the mother of all mistakes. I don't even know where to begin in describing everything that went wrong with the construction and design of this bridge. First of all, when they were constructing it. Okay, no, no, first of all, somebody actually said that that was a good idea. I'll get into that. Oh, wait. Fuck, there's a lot. So the design of this bridge from the architect's hand, an architect who is from Poland, who lives in London, not two places that really are known for their uh, bicycle culture and their understanding of bicycle infrastructure, he decided to reinvent the drawbridge or the swing bridge. These designs that have been around for centuries, if not millennia, he said, no, I'm going to make what I call the kissing bridge. Not what I call, what he calls the kissing bridge. It's going to slide back like that and then it's going to kiss in the middle, back and forth. Wow, gimmicky. So that proved to be the major problem. Uh, they could not get these two pieces to connect. It took them forever to figure it out. All of the different construction mistakes that went wrong, pieces arriving uh, from different places in the world, completely the wrong size, so they had to reorder them. It was delayed. Finally, no, wait. Then they were testing it, and the machine room that runs this huge monster of, a, of an engineered bridge, it flooded, <laughs> and they had to replace the motor or fix it. I don't even know. And then the company who was building the bridge went bankrupt. After like 120 years, this old Danish company, they just folded. So the bridge was left in limbo. Most of the construction was there, except for the, the middle part. We started calling it the missing bridge instead of the kissing bridge. Finally, they're testing it. They're trying to get the, the, the little kissy part to go up in the middle there, and they couldn't get it to work. Then the excuses started rolling in from, uh, from the city. Oh, uh, you know, we didn't expect a combination of warm weather and cold harbor water in the spring. This is not an unusual thing in Copenhagen that you have warm spring days and cold harbor water. Just lame excuses. Everybody's trying to explain why this is going wrong. It was so massively delayed because the company went bankrupt, uh, because the city of Copenhagen didn't have the money to complete it themselves during that year's budget. The whole process up until the construction of the bridge, that is one thing. But then there's the design flaws on this bridge. We have standards in Denmark. They have them in the Netherlands as well, carved in stone in the 1920s, 1930s, about what kind of grade is suitable to bikes, what kind of infrastructure is appropriate in different locations. So first of all, the grade on this bridge, it is really steep. Whoever designed this bridge has never ridden a bicycle in Copenhagen. They did not do any research about the fact that we have 40,000 cargo bikes in Copenhagen. Copenhageners, man, they can muscle up and down that bridge, no problem, but they shouldn't have to. It should have been designed better and lower with an easier grade based on the standards that we have had in place for a century. Fail. Where the bridge connects on the other side, it connects with the medieval city center. Absolute chaos. You have so many tourists in this location in the summer. You have thousands of Copenhageners going back and forth on the bridge. When it hits the city, the street on the other side, they didn't even think about that solution either. Complete chaos. And they're still trying to figure it out. They keep putting up barriers, putting up warning signs. And that is something that the city of Copenhagen could have fixed. That has nothing to do with the architect himself. But that is the city of Copenhagen complicit in the fail of this bridge. It boggles the mind that it could happen anywhere, but especially that it could happen in Copenhagen. There was a jury in Copenhagen who said, oh, gee, that's a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. Let's bling it up, man. Yeah, okay. The main problem is that you're coming over the bridge on both sides, and there's this sharp chicane. You got to, like, tuck in to the outside. But look down here. This is, if you ever come to Copenhagen, like, come and take photos of this and Instagram it. This is, this is hilarious. Look at these skid marks. Every single day, there are fresh skid marks on this bridge from people coming over, getting some speed up on the descent, and then going, wait, it doesn't go straight? <laughs> and if you look at this one, man, this is hilarious. That skid mark corresponds perfectly with the back tire of every bike that almost hits this barrier. There are no reports of cyclists hitting it and going over, but you know, we're just sort of waiting for the day. Hang on. It's simply not intuitive design if people who live in one of the world's great bicycle cities continue to make this mistake. 
And then if you look over here, this has got to be the funniest thing. They put up warning signage on the bridge to warn people that they're going to hit the glass. Anytime you have to put a sign up saying this is how the design works or this is how the design might hurt you, then it is just really shitty design. And so here, this is when the bridge opens, this barrier, huge demonstrative barriers rise up. It is the craziest engineering solution for one of the simplest things in the world, a bicycle and a pedestrian bridge. A lot of times I come riding over the bridge and they're fixing it. They're, it's in a constant state of repair. If you have to keep fixing something, that's also maybe a sign that it's not that great. So you see the yellow up there, the one that you hit when you're coming across the bridge. When the bridge opens, it slides backwards. And if you happen to be in this location, you can see this fragment of urban <laughs> beauty. When the, it comes back here, you got the blue. This is what happens. Oh my God, it turns green. That's it. So in a way, it fulfills an important function, right? It is an amazing link, leading people from the southern suburbs to the city center and back uh, up the harbor as well. I wrote an article about this. I'm gonna link to it down in the description. It was published on this architecture website, Arch Daily, and really funny, when that hit, the internet. All the Danish journalists wanted to talk about this bridge because somebody had criticized it for the obvious flaws uh, inherent in this bridge. And, uh, and I, in my article I said, you know, it's an important link, but let's face it, it's a stupid, stupid bridge. Riding my bike over it to go to work one day, and as I'm cresting the top of the too steep bridge, there were two young women, they were speaking uh, British English, and they stopped, and one of them said, hey, wait, I think this is the stupid, stupid bridge. So. I apologize to the city of Copenhagen and the tourism office for labeling this bridge as the stupid, stupid bridge. But at the end of the day, it's stupid. Next bridge. Bridge number two in the unholy trinity of bridge stupidity in Copenhagen. This is the newest bridge in the armada of bicycle pedestrian bridges in Copenhagen. And it's a nice bridge. Dutch and Danish architects, it's not so bad. The standards have been respected. It's not hard to get up and over it. I believe it's a swing bridge, which works, we know that. But why is it stupid? Well, this building over here was built by a Danish philanthropic organization who focus on urbanism. And they wanted to put a big fancy building on the harbor and they got Rem Koolhaas to design it. And really, so many Copenhageners hate that building. It's called blocks, because it looks like a bunch of blocks, right? Like, you can like it or not, irrelevant. I don't like it, and that's a question of taste. And they said that in, in the package, we're going to build a bicycle bridge. But we have a bridge right over there. It's called Langebro. It's one of the main arteries leading into the city of Copenhagen, 20, 25,000 cyclists a day, coming from the south into the city center. Not a bad bridge built in the 1930s. So why do we need this bridge is my question. And it really is nothing more than a grand vanity project. Their pitch was that this is where the original bridge across the harbor lay for centuries. So we're kind of going back in time, a little bit of history. They paid for it, fine. Copenhagen, I think the city pays for the upkeep of it, the maintenance, but you know, whatever. So another primary issue with this bridge is that it doesn't serve very many Copenhageners. Okay, you come from the city center. Oh my gosh, that's great. Nice little gentle bridge over the harbor and you land here where I'm standing. What are your options for places to go? You have down the harbor here. But this is not a bicycle artery. So you can ride along here and there's another bridge and you can get to a few places with a little bit of difficulty, not a very straight A to B, but there are cobblestones along here to keep it slow and to preserve this little piece of Copenhagen Harbor as sort of more of a recreational space. Also, there are only offices down there, so not many people live there. Second option, you can go straight off the bridge and roll right down towards the Christianshavn neighborhood. And there are some apartments down here, so there's a, there's a few hundred people that can benefit from this bridge if they work in the city center. But then when you get to the end of the road, that house way at the end there starts the worst cobblestones in all of Copenhagen. That entire neighborhood is just old school cobblestones, teeth rattling, bone jarring cobblestones. So nobody coming from the southern neighborhoods are gonna take this shortcut to get here because of the cobblestones. So that is completely off limits. Very few people at all can benefit from this bridge in that direction. Then you have the other way. That leads to the Eastlandsbrugge neighborhood and there are a lot of people there uh, who can benefit from this bridge because it's easy for them to get up and over it. So uh, that's fine. If you're coming from the south and you're coming up and over the big bridge, Langebro, you can actually shoot off the bridge and 
take this little shortcut, a gentler bridge to get to the city center. But when you're going home, you can't get back up onto the bridge. You got to go do a huge detour through that neighborhood. So it's a, it's a one-way benefit for the people coming from the south. So this entire bridge is basically designed for the few people who live in one neighborhood of Copenhagen. That is a lot of engineering and design and taxpayer money used on maintenance really for absolutely nothing when we had a perfectly good bridge already. This is the first bicycle and pedestrian bridge over Copenhagen Harbor. And from the very beginning, it has worked fine. It is now almost at capacity. So many people use it, connecting the traditional neighborhoods in Copenhagen with whole new developments over on the island of Ama. And it has been great. It's a swing bridge. It opens and closes, and you can't complain. Uh, totally functional and well used. And in a really great location for expanding the mobility in Copenhagen. Before this bridge was built, if you lived in the Vesterbro neighborhood and you had to go to work out there, I was one of these people because I worked out at Danish Broadcasting, you'd have to go all the way down to that bridge way in the distance. So this was great. It's a legendary bridge in the Copenhagen context. And later, it connected up with the bicycle snake world famous you know hit the headlines when they opened it and a lot of people think it's a, an elevated cycleway it's not it's just a ramp to help people get from the harbor up to the next bridge that we're going to it needs no introduction whatsoever great piece of infrastructure you have a bi-directional across the bridge it hits a bi-directional here up the up the bicycle snake and uh, then you get up to the top and normally as we all know hopefully by now Bi-directional is fine when you have no cross traffic from cars along a harbor, a bridge like this, through a park. You don't put them in the middle of a city. It is simply bad design. We threw it away 20 years ago here in Copenhagen out of our best practice because it wasn't safe enough. But bi-directional on a bridge is fine. Bi-directional on the ramp is fine. And then we got to see how that connects up with the third bridge in the unholy trinity of bridge stupidity. This is the latest one that we have gotten. Dubelsbro, it was a bridge before, over the railway tracks with cycle tracks on either side, sidewalks for the many train passengers getting off the station here, going to the big stupid shopping mall on the other side. Then the city decided to cover it. It had this weird gap in the middle and they covered in the hole in the middle and they created a super wide cycle track and they were selling it as Copenhagen's widest cycle track. Oh my God, it's like 10 meters wide. Yeah, it's pretty wide. Do we need all that space? Probably not. There are a lot of cyclists coming across. Boyga one up the bicycle snake using this section of infrastructure to get to the city. Yes, it's an important mobility link, but do we need all of that? We need to have some green, we need to have benches, we need to have wider sidewalks. When they finished this in 2019, I came and had a look at it and I was astounded at how badly designed it was. I counted at least eight different things that were wrong with this bridge from a bicycle urbanism design perspective. And this was the city of Copenhagen itself. It was no big fancy schmancy uh, Polish architect who won a competition. This was done by people who should know much better, but there was politics involved. There was all sorts of, so many things wrong with this bridge. This proves a very simple point in bicycle urbanism. Having a unidirectional network like we have in Copenhagen in most Danish cities, the best practice established a century ago. And then you have a bi-directional connecting up with a unidirectional network. It simply doesn't work. This intersection is so chaotic with the over 20,000 people on bikes using it every single day. 12,000 pedestrians going to the shopping mall after they get off the train. So if we look at a map of this solution, you have this weird two-stage rocket. In order to cross the intersection, you have to do something incredibly counterintuitive. And then they continue on like that and turn right, but there are pedestrians. And then they continue up over their big fancy Copenhagen's widest cycle track. Oh my God, yay. So many people in the morning rush hour, especially hack this system, they come across the intersection this way and use the pedestrian crossing to get over to the bi-directional on one side of the bridge. And right now we have four cyclists who decided that they don't wanna do that weird two-stage crossing so they're playing by their own rules 
Technically, there were some Danish traffic laws that were kind of ignored there. Personally, I totally get it. These people, without knowing it, are the absolute experts, and if they are rejecting the design, even several months after its completion, then it really shows that it is crappy design. Look at this guy coming across the intersection. They just did a diagonal straight across the intersection. I must admit I've done it a couple of times. This is citizens who look at a design and they reject it. And not just a couple of deviants every single day, hundreds and hundreds of people saying, this sucks. I am gonna make my own way through the intersection. I used to live in this neighborhood and there used to be a roundabout on this intersection. It worked great. My proposal for the city of Copenhagen is to put it back. Very simple, we have roundabouts all over the place. It works fine. And it is the only obvious intuitive solution for this intersection. One of the great bicycle cities on the planet and they are making mistakes on a scale that we have never seen before. It is beyond embarrassing and it's taxpayer money that's being used on stuff like this. I really hope that we regain our sense of pride in our bicycle infrastructure and that we revert to using Danish pragmatism, best practice design and simple common sense when we're going to continue to plan and expand the network.